The following extended behind the scenes video is brought to you by the members of our Patreon page. If you're not familiar with Patreon, it's a website that lets us make epic rap battles of history how we'd like to make them and independently. If you're already a member of our Patreon, thank you very much. You've been instrumental. If you'd like to find out more information, you can click the link below or go to patreon.com slash ERB. And now, enjoy the video! My face looks like a butthole. Yeah. Blue eyed buttholes. Meow meow, I'm a cat. Welcome to the behind the scenes! <laughs> Steve Irwin's always been a character on the radar, but it always felt like either too soon or too wrong. And just recently it felt like this is the right time. I think it was a combination of the fact that his family is doing a new show and it's not too soon anymore, if that makes any sense. We couldn't really find a pairing for Steve Irwin. Never really understood who to put him up against. But then I saw Jacques Cousteau in a suggestion and I was like, yeah. That feels right. Jacques Cousteau's got a nice history. He's a conservationist. Hang on a minute. Steve Irwin, the conservationist. <laughs> That'll be nice. They're two drastically different personalities. I mean, come on. Like, animal guy and animal guy. Done. Oh, oh, this one, this one, this one. Something, 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 something. Uh, Sherium, you were killed by a creature. Yes. That <laughs> kids touch in aquariums. <laughs> <laughs> When it comes to the writing process, every battle is different. Gusteau came right out, we had a bunch of good jokes, we assembled them, it came right out in like maybe like a night and a half. I have a feeling Lloyd's gonna say that Cousteau was really easy because he was only here for the one day when it all came together. There were multiple days where we were really grinding out Cousteau um, and Lloyd wasn't here. So it wasn't easy, Lloyd. You just weren't there. We definitely have to make fun of Steve Irwin's like khaki shorts and boots, you know? Right, like your khaki Daisy Dukes. Khaki Daisy Dukes is great. I think because Steve Irwin is like such a beloved person and the accent is a little bit challenging. That one took a lot of massaging. Jacques who still feels like the kind of guy that can make fun of you right to your face. Whereas Steve Irwin, he's always so friendly that it made it hard to write uh, good insults for him. Shouts out to Rich, Chris, and Raman writing some submissions on this here battle. We did do a writer's room event on the Patreon uh, Discord where we met up with some of the people who are patrons and they helped write some jokes and one big one made it. Jacques Custodian, uh, straight from the Discord. I'm the gold medal rhymer on the podium, cleaning you up like a Jacques Custodian. That was a 100% pure Patreon fam, so thanks homies. Jacques Cousteau, Etus Pizzo, invented scuba captain the Calypso, Bob Lore winning documenter of the ocean, ready to battle a desperate Swedish omen. My accent work was through this dude I found on YouTube called Two Minute Accents. And they go through each vowel, A, O, U, I, Y, W, like sometimes this. Sometimes when you have an accent, you're like, I, this doesn't sound right and I don't know why. But now if I mess up the words, I'm like, oh yeah, because I, I said boy and I, said, I didn't say boy. And like, I know how the, my shape of my mouth is supposed to go and like how flat my tongue is supposed to be or something. And it's like a crazy amount of science for that. Now I'm not gonna pretend for even one second that I did a great French accent, cause I didn't. But I did learn about the silent H thing, which I never would have done. They don't say here, they say ear. And that was really helpful. It helped like set a tone of, of Frenchness. Next the H sounds totally disappear. So you get appel. Eight and L. With both accents, we never know whether to go for it and, and be willing to fail or just not even try too hard. So it's like, oh, we didn't even try that hard. Steve Owen, verse one. Holy smokes, what a place to go. You'd need a submarine for a blow that low. You better run, you better take cover. Cause crikey, I'm going from croc to Jacques Hunter. This is a hairdresser in her natural habitat. Look at that. She, she's perfected the art of using tools. <laughs> I remember Brittany worked at Maker Studios in the props and costumes department. I first started working with Brittany on the Superman Socks music video. She helped make the yellow smiley face head. So I, we knew her for sure. And then she didn't start doing makeup for us until I wanna say maybe season five. The clothes only do so much as makeup girls are where it's at, they make it. So she works kind of in partnership with Ashlyn, who was our previous head makeup person. Now Ashlyn designs the looks. Brittany's with us on set. She gets along with everybody. We really like you, Brittany, and you're doing a great job. I also could just go to Huntington Beach and and, and fit in right there. Just too. blend in, yeah. Like, what up, man? What up, man? Want some CBD oil, bro? <laughs> 
Hell yeah, bro. We got that new CBD oil gum, bro. <laughs> Chew you right out, man. Look at my hand. Never shakes, bro. I thought Steve Irwin looked fantastic. Like Lloyd, I, that was, it was freaky. The makeup process for Steve Irwin started with spray tan. Brittany, do you have an air compressor with you everywhere you go? No. <laughs> Apparently I look good with a tan. That's what everybody was saying all day. Lloyd, you should really tan more. You also look like, if I can say this, I think it's okay. He looked like super sexy. We're getting thorough. I don't know if the camera's ever gonna go there. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. Yeah. Yeah. And he looks good on a tan. So right now we're just like outlining a base of wrinkles. It's amazing because they really look 3D. Like those lines are just paint. It's just paint. But from here. The makeup process for Jacques Cousteau was actually pretty pretty gentle because I always had a hat on, so the, the wig didn't need to be perfect, didn't need to be all glued or whatever. So I didn't have to do a whole thing, which was great. There's these stages like kind of while you're getting into costume that are pretty interesting. This is this is my look right now. I, I feel free. <laughs> this is halfway out of a white t-shirt. It makes me look like I have boobs. Stuff. Right. It's right here, it's called a stag spider. And what it does is, it invites a fly over to its apartment, real late on the weekend, right? It takes the you up, and then when the fly comes over, it bites it, and then it doesn't call the fly back for two to three days, mate. Beauty. Oh, look out there. Look out, buddy. Oh, isn't he beautiful? It's a little guy. Look at that. Oh, he bit me, mate. Steve Irwin has a uniform, so that's all he ever wore, so that's really all we had to wear. A lot of khaki shorts, khakis here, khakis there. The wig and then my eyebrows, lightening my eyebrows a little bit too. One of the notes that Pete gave me before it started was that the shorts needed to be so tight that uh, you could see Lloyd's ball. Oh, holy smokes, what a place to go! You'd need a submarine for a blow that low! The costume for Jacques Cousteau was this like silky smooth shirt. Man, that shirt was groovy. I figured out that he wears these blue shirts and that they were this cotton fabric chambray that was made just after the Industrial Revolution and it's like a durable but light cotton fabric. And then I found this pair of pants at a thrift store. I saw these pants with a little tie and I didn't even try them on, I just knew. I was like, those are the pants. All of the reference photos that I had of Jacques Cousteau, Jacques Cousteau didn't have glasses on. And uh, Pete had brought some uh, aviator, I think for maybe like a boat scene or something like that. I had to pull uh, the lenses out. One of them came out very easily. The other one I had to slice up with the Dremel and then pinch out with some uh, tin snips. Hey. The scuba gear Morgan made out of tubes and like hoses and stuff. I spent a whole day at a thrift store looking for things that might look like a scuba tank and Morgan nailed it with a foam roller, man. One of those like exercise foam rollers, the black one, it's perfect. It's a foam roller that I just painted black. It used to have like all that red stuff on it. Okay. And then this is the top of like a, uh, maybe like a one quart uh, sport squirt jug. I just cut the top off and glued it on there to give it some shape. Wow. That's always a balance of like, how do we make this look as good as possible without spending a million dollars on something that's gonna be in there for two seconds, but also making it detailed and look nice. It's always the balance that I'm kind of going through. I got the wetsuit at a thrift store too, which in retrospect, I maybe is not the most hygienic thing in the world. You don't wanna go for used skin gear, I guess. Lloyd wanted me to borrow his wetsuit and I asked him if he pees in it every time and he said yes and I said, well then no. But then I went ahead and bought some strangers used wetsuit that I'm sure they peed in every time. But what are you gonna do? You gotta suffer for your art. You gotta sit and pee sometimes. Old pee. Old pee. They wanted to do a shot of Jacques Cousteau kind of swimming. So we have to simulate it on the green screen. So what do we need to do? So we need to elevate Jacques Cousteau's body to where it looks like he's swimming. So then we have to have a table that can hold him or apple boxes that can hold him steadily and comfortably. It's kind of dumb, but I love it. We have always known that it's a nicer reaction, more real, more present, more immediate, when we can actually put each other face to face. Talk about sons, better watch what you say now. You almost turned yours into outback mistake. And because the 
um, costumes didn't take too long to put on. We were able to keep me in costume, and then when he came out as Cousteau, we, we did the shots that we needed to do together. Really early in the writing process, we wanted to have a moment where Steve Irwin is like, examining Cousteau like he's a snake or a crocodile or something and uh, walking around him. But then when we started filming it, you know, we had him get closer and closer to the camera and then walk back and walk around me. When we are able to get everyone on set together, you really do get some magic little moments happening. <laughs> Regarding drinks on the props table, I also think people think it's kind of funny. In the last video, somebody opened a drink seemingly on purpose. There's gonna be a day when something gets built on that's gonna delay the day or cost us money. And I feel like I'm gonna wanna say, I told you so. And maybe I'll gloat about it, but at the same time I'll be annoyed because, I forget it, I don't wanna get into it. It just gets me annoyed. This is Morgan's work area. <laughs> so one prop, some tissues from when he was crying, <laughs> two LaCroix, a fan that was for talent, a sign that says no drinks, covered by looks like sunblock. It's fine. Me and Atul have different, differing opinions on uh, how to conduct oneself in a business art setting. So we met at a Starbucks. Uh, why a Starbucks? Starbucks close to his house. I want to make this process easier. All right, I want to make this process easier. So I um, drove out there towards his place. He rode his bike there. So somebody was closer, somebody was further. Not the point, but it's the point. And he had his little printouts of my credit card receipts. From this one to this one is all for this battle. From this one to this one is all this battle. And then we just chit chatted for a while. Because, I mean, deep down, I really like Atul. What did you bring for us today, Morgan? Just some different uh, articles about politics and just that kind of stuff. Or you mean the, the costumes? Well, I thought, yeah, I thought that's kind of what you were concentrating on the last couple days. <clears throat> no, I just did like a quick Amazon order and I just mostly been reading these articles. Does that help? With the costumes? Yeah. No, it has nothing to do with the costumes.